This time on the show, capturing and analyzing Bluetooth packets with the Ubertooth One, Kismet, and Wireshark, booting virtual box VMs from physical USB drives, bypassing Geo IP location restrictions, and tons more, this time on Hack 5. This segment is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Howdy, partner, and welcome to Hack 5, your weekly dose of Technolust. I'm your rootin' tootin' host, Darren Kitchen. Hey, y'all. I'm Shannon Morris, and we have plenty of cool stuff coming up for you this episode. <laughs> Since when did you go country? I don't know. It's just I'm playing Red Dead Redemption, and I'm like crazy about like yes. hog times and whores. You know what else is good? That. You mean our giraffe? Yes, our giraffe. We've. This is kind of like an inside Hack Five joke where we've been saying since season one. You know, ah, we'll make it when we've got a jib. It we really, got a jib. We made it. Yeah. Can you move the jib? I want to see it move. Yay, ooh, okay, now everybody's throwing up. All right, Aww. anyway, um, I'm just really stoked because Paul back there is managing our Cobra Crane, which cobra. makes him the Cobra Commander. Isn't that okay. great? Yeah, that was yeah, good. Right. I know. Yeah. <laughs> now, what do we get in the mail? Because I know that we love to get uh, yes. all sorts of fun stuff from you guys. Well, you can hold this. Woo! Uh, oh this comes God. from Craig C. in Wisconsin. He says, Darren Kitchen at Hack5. I love the show. Watch it all the time on my Roku box. Awesome choice, by the way. I wanted to send this to you to add to your collection. An old AMD K6 processor with a Microsoft Windows logo printed on it. Oh Great my job gosh. with We are going to have to get... There's really a Microsoft logo yeah, printed on it? Yeah, we'll have to That's get a close-up of this. Wow. Just look at that. Oh my gosh. It's That's not the even old a, school one, too. It's not even a K6, too. This thing is a proper K6. Wow. Oh, the pin's bent. How yeah. sad. Yeah, no. Well, it's, the other crazy thing is not BGP. There are actual pins here instead of little balls. Yes, that's true. Cool. I know. I love old tech. Me too. Old tech is so good. It's so craziness. Mm. It should be. It should be like up on the wall. And we'll do that. We need to upgrade the set. Yeah. Yeah. We'll probably have that done by beginning of season ten. I hope. You know. Oh, and then we've got details uh, about the uh, season ten party at the end of the show, so stick around, of course, because that's going to be lots of fun. We're having a season 10 party? Do you need another excuse for a party? Oh, well, not really. But okay, well, we're going to have a season 10 party then. Okay, cool. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, but amazing stuff coming up. I've got a uh, follow-up with last week's Ubertooth One Setup Guide. We're going to be capturing packets with Kismet. We're going to be analyzing them with Wireshark. It's going to be a lot nice. of fun. Yeah, and you've got some VirtualBox stuff? I have VirtualBox creating a VMDKs out of USBs, which actually, I need to go finish that, so why don't you <laughs> go, good stuff. you know, do your thing? All right. I'll be back, y'all. So again, guys, if you're not familiar with the Ubertooth One, it is a uh, open source Bluetooth testing tool. It's made by Mike Osman, and it's really a response to just the lack of really good Bluetooth testing devices and basically a ridiculously high-priced commercial stuff for monitoring that's like $10,000. So anyway, this guy basically does kind of the same thing as we've been doing on Hacktip recently, uh, which is a lot of like fun packet sniffing with Wi-Fi. It allows us to basically go into monitor mode for Bluetooth, and uh, that's going to t let us take, say, a Bluetooth device and start sniffing and doing f some fun analysis. And we'll get to some practical stuff on that in a little bit here. Of course, this segment isn't only just applying to, uh, to the Ubertooth, as some of this setup stuff really is uh, it's just kind of the fundamentals of Linux stuff. And uh, we'll be getting into some fun, cool SED stuff and whatnot. So stick around. I'm sure you guys will enjoy. And of course, big props over to Harvest Gardener over at the Backtrack uh, Linux forums for putting together a lot of this. You see, as most of the Ubertooth development was actually done on uh, Mac OS X, Getting it to work in Linux, well, it actually isn't too difficult, thankfully. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead, plug my Ubertooth in, and let's get right to it. The first thing we are going to need is actually the source code to Kismet. Kismet being our favorite, uh, I guess you would call it like an auditing tool, like a, well, anyway, it's what we use to find all the wireless access points around and whatnot. So first thing we need to do is just go ahead and w get that guy, and he is over at http slash slash www.kismet wireless. And with that downloaded, it's really just a matter of going ahead and extracting. And what we're going to need to do to actually uh, compile the plugin 
for the Ubertooth to work with Kismet is that we're going to need to move the source that we've just downloaded from the Kismet uh, wireless.net over to slash src slash s or sorry slash user slash source slash Kismet because that's where it's expecting to be. So we're just going to move what we just downloaded to slash user slash src and it wants to be in Kismet. There we go. And if I ls user src Kismet, I can see there we go. We've got all the files. Everything's where it needs to be. Uh, so if we just head back over there, uh, we can just go ahead and configure it. So cd to slash user source kismet and do dot slash configure. All right, and now with all, that all set up, we can actually go ahead and actually install the kismet plugin for the Ubertooth. So that is back in our home directory here under uh, the Ubertooth tools, so Ubertooth, uh, the latest release, and it's in host and Kismet. And we just want to go into plugin, tag Ubertooth, and it's, uh, you know, as simple as doing make and then make install. So in this case, I'm going to do make and then, you know, typically I'd hit enter, wait, type make install. Uh, this time what I want to do is actually use two ampersands. And what that says is if make completes without any errors, go ahead and run this next command. I could alternatively do uh, two uh, pipes and say if make fails, and then it would do whatever I tell it to. So we want to say if make completes correctly, we're going to go ahead and do make install. And just let that compile just a bit. So it's gone ahead and compiled, it's installed. Now we just need to go ahead and add, uh, remember that library from last week? We need to add pcap btbb to the Kismet configuration file so that it understands how to do those log files. Uh, so let's just head over to where that guy lives. He's in slash user, uh, local, Etsy, and it's kismet.conf, yes. Okay, so if we grep, we're just going to look for, uh, what is it called, log types in kismet.conf. We're going to see here that by default, the log types are pcap dump, uh, GPS XML, uh, net XML, net text, and alert. And what we need to do is just go ahead and add pcap btbb to the end of that. Now, Typically, I just use Vi, scroll down, find it, add it, uh, and that's a lot of fun. But I figure, why don't we just go ahead and use the opportunity to have a little action, a little, uh, little set action, right? So basically, what this is going to allow us to do is find where it says PCAP, comma, GPS, like all of these different op options, and add our own option to the end of it in one command, which is, you know, if we wanted to automate this, say, make an installer sh shell script, uh, we could just use this to go ahead and do that without having to you know, say append it to the end of the file, and then we'd have two log type SQLs. You know, that, that's no good. We don't want that. So first, let's just go ahead and test this command out. So I'm going to run sed, and what we're going to do here is use a regular expression. So that's why I'm putting this in single quotes, and the s, uh, s slash is going to go ahead and search. And what we're searching for is going to be, and I'm going to put this within parentheses, uh, to group it, and that'll come into play later here. Of course, the parentheses need to be escaped, and that's why we have a backslash in front of it. So uh, what we're looking for here is pcap dump, uh, what, GPS, XML, net XML, net text, and alert. Okay, so those are the things that we're looking for. So I'm going to close that parentheses. And what we're going to replace it with, so slash, um, anything I type here is what we're going to replace it with. Now, since I've grouped them within those uh, escaped parentheses, I can now reuse that as backslash one. So I don't have to type all that again. If I had another thing in parentheses, well, then that would be backslash two and so on and so on. Uh, so that just saves me a lot of typing and that's fun kind of there. So now I can just go ahead and, you know, I, I put backslash one. So it's going to place all of the stuff that I just put in parentheses there. And now I can just append it to it, comma, and this time it's going to be pcap btbb. There we go. And I will want to uh, do that globally. So there will be a slash forward slash g for global. And then I can ent uh, exit that. Uh, and we're going to do it on the file kismet.conf. Okay.
Now, if I do this, it's just going to make the change and spew out the entire output of this file. Then I'll have to scroll through and figure out if it got it. Well, rather than that, I'm just going to go ahead and pipe that into grep, and I'm going to look for log types. So I run that sed command, and I've piped it to grep. I'm looking for log types, and I see that I've actually added that right there without even having to go over and use vi or anything like that. This is great if you wanted to, say, automate a script to do an installer or something like that. Now, of course, I haven't actually modified this file. See, if I run that grep again, I'm going to see that, no, I don't have comma pcap uh, btbb on there. What I need to do here is come back over to sed, hit control A to just go right back to the beginning of the command and put in tack I and this way it's actually going to touch the file. Again, grep it and ha ha, there we go. So we are ready to finally fire up Kismet, our favorite plugin or our favorite program for doing all sorts of fun auditing and uh, actually start packet capturing some data off some Bluetooth devices. It's going to be a lot of fun. So Kismet, right from here, actually and yes, it's, yeah, I know, I'm running its root. And yes, we want to start the server. Go ahead. And I'm going to close this. I'm actually going to quit here because I started it from the wrong location. OK, I want to go back home. So CD is just going to bring me back home, PWD, and I'm in slash root. All right, this way, my, file, my log files are going to end up where I want them. So I'm going to run Kismet. And yes, again, we're running as root. I get it. Well, let's start the server with the default options. Let's close the window here, and in just a moment, it's going to start complaining that we don't have a source. There it is. And yes, what we need to do is define the source. So I hit yes, and the source is going to be Ubertooth, all lowercase. The name is Ubertooth, and there are no options. So we'll hit add. Now, using Grov, I'm going to pull up the Kismet menu, and I'm going to come over to plugins, and I'll see that. I can select my plugins, and I have already done this before. I've already set up the Ubertooth uh, UI to automatically load. If this is your first time coming in here, you would come in here and you would hit enter on this and set it to yes, and then you would come over to close, and then it would go ahead and start working. All right. So now that I have that plugin installed and ready to go, if I come over to, say, my cell phone and actually turn on Bluetooth, I can see here immediately I have a, uh, I am starting to capture plenty of packets here. Uh, I see the MAC address, this one that ends in 9E, 8B, 33, that's, uh, that's my phone. And if there were other Bluetooth devices in the vicinity, like a lot of times uh, Paul's Mac Pro over there, he's Mac Pro's keyboard, which could interface Bluetooth with uh, Android, I would see those as well. But really what I want to do is analyze these, and that's what brings us Wireshark. I mean, you guys know I love Wireshark. It's kind of the gold standard for all sorts of uh, you know fun IP-based analysis, and this is no different. It just happens to be Bluetooth. So all we need to do to actually start uh, playing with these packets is to install a plugin for uh, Wireshark that'll actually allow us to see those packets. The the same thing, the BTBB, the Bluetooth baseband, and that's what's going to let us do that. So I'm going to quit Kismet here. Okay, and we're going to kill that. And what I want to do, we're going to make a temporary directory. And I want to go ahead and download the plugin already compiled and ready to go for Wireshark, kind of speed this up. Uh, it's a very similar process to install from source as we did with Kismet, but for the sake of things, since we're already running the 32-bit version and uh, Harvest Gardner over at the Backtrack Forms has already done this, we just download that and uh, put it in the right place and we all set. I've already mirrored this at my own web server, so I'm going to wget. And unzip that. And what we need to do is move these files over to uh, basically the plugins folder for Wireshark and we're all set to go. So that's kind of nice. So I'm just going to mv star over to slash uh, user local lib Wireshark and it's in plugins and 1.4.6 is my version. And there we go. They're moved over. We are off to the races. We're ready to actually start analyzing these. So if I take a look at the files that I've captured here, the uh, Kismet one, so ls star Kismet, I can see that I have a, 
uh, .pcap btbb. That's the one that I'm interested in. So fire up Wireshark and point it to kismet.pcap btbb. And it's going to complain that I'm running as root as well. Yes, I know. Okay. And there we go. Check that out. I've got all of the information here on, on the source of the different Bluetooth packets that we've actually obtained. It seems that there are, are quite a few MAC addresses in the area of stuff that we've seen. And the destination, in this case, there's a lot of broadcasting going on. And we can actually drill down here and take a look at the frames and, and all of the fun stuff and actually start doing a little bit of debugging. So I'll give you a practical example on why you might want to do something like this. Say you've got, I don't know, a PlayStation or any kind of Bluetooth device. PlayStation is a good example. You've got the, the controller with the X's and the triangles and squares and all that fun stuff. And maybe you wanted to write a program for your computer that could interface with the console the same way that the controller does. You know, if only you knew what the packet sequence was that it was sending over Bluetooth to that device. Hmm, I know, sniffing, analysis. It's really fun reverse engineering stuff. And I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys think about these kinds of segments. Of course, if you're interested in grabbing an Ubertooth, you can find that over at hakshop.com. Shannon does a great job getting those out to everybody. And stay tuned because in just a bit, Shannon is actually going to be creating a VMDK out of a bootable USB key. But first, let's take a quick break and then we'll check in with Kirby for the Meow of the Week. In this episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben addresses the lazy gamers out there, and he builds a disc changer for the Xbox 360 so that you can select between games from the comfort of your couch. Stay tuned at element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win the Xbox disc changer that he builds in this episode. Remember to subscribe to youtube.com slash show to check out episodes and unique content. 